Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here at Las Vegas for AWS reInvent. I'm John Furrier, your host with Dave Vellante. We had full team coverage, articles hitting on Silicon Valley, exclusive with Adam Selesky before the show started. I think I nailed the keynote on that one, Dave. Adam yeah, was, yeah, uh, as usual, John. we got, <laughs> got that done. Amazing announcements, what a great show. It's kind of wrapping down. Um, and it, it's really been an inflection point as Gen AI and infrastructure and the new stack emerges. We're going to, we're going to break that down with Bill Vass, CUBE alumni and friend of the CUBE. Uh, very knowledgeable, yeah. VP of engineering at AWS. Uh, He's got his hands in all the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to theCUBE, good to yeah, see you. It's yeah, always a pleasure. Happy to be here, happy yeah. to be ready to see you again, John. This is a tradition, uh, we'll have to get you and Swami back to kind of close out the Cube because it's like, it's like leaning back after the game and be like, hey, how'd that home run hit? Oh, I ran around the base, almost missed second, yeah. but we still touched all the bases, congratulations. Um, Let's, let's dig into it, a lot to talk about, but I think we were just talking on camera, a couple key things going on. The NVIDIA relationship on stage with Adam and, and Jensen was, yeah. it was a huge point yeah. we were commenting earlier. Um, as a big customer and also as a, as a place where you know, Amazon Web Services has everything. You don't yeah. need to do anything. You go, where else can you go for whatever you need? You yeah, got everything yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, we even had, well, I don't know if you saw the announcement of the uh, Qualcomm instances on AWS. Yeah. And we even have Apple instances on AWS. I mean, we have Graviton, we have AMD, we have you know, uh, Intel, we have all, since for the last 13 years, we were the first to put NVIDIA on the cloud. Right, and we continue to be the leader in that, and certainly in volume of NVIDIA uh, on the cloud for, by a long shot. Mm. So it's exciting to see that. And now I'm really excited about the new L40 S's, and that's because that, that's been a big area in mine where I work uh, the digital twin and a lot of the simulation and, and training and autonomous vehicle components. And uh, what they're doing with Omniverse is going to be the future for that in a lot of ways. So we're integrating it with TwinMaker. Uh, mm -hmm. We announced today, so you'll, you'll see that that coming as well. And we use it in our fulfillment centers for explain for a lot of explain how that manifests into sort of a customer value. Um, so, so as far as the Omniverse, or as yes, far as the yeah, Twin Maker, Twin Maker, yeah. yeah. So, so we've got thousands of customers building digital twins, and and you know the future. What we've been building up for over the years is is sort of this virtual cycle, and we always like flywheels <laughs> at Amazon. Everything yeah, flywheel, we just right? About right, that right with exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, so you, from my perspective, we start with connect and collect, right? So connect and collect Collect. Uh, all the things that I've done since I've been here has been focused first on connect and collect. So snowballs, you can send data in. ETL, data transmission, uh, uh, data sync, uh, storage gateway, uh, uh, Kinesis streams, Kafka streams, uh, all of those things to get data in. And then IOT, right, connect and collect. And now uh, uh, Kuiper, private 5G, all those things connect and collect. Because you're going to build these dense models, you need a a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of data. So then, you got to be able to manage that data, right? So you got S3, you got the new accelerated S3, is very exciting, you got FSX, you've got all these ways to manage exabytes and in the future, zettabytes of data, right? You know, we even have the ZFS file system open, ZFS under FSX as well. So I mean, uh, so that that's there. And then, you're going to need to generate synthetic data. And that's in its early stages, uh, because for example, when you're training these models, like if you were uh, training a model to uh, dynamically adapt your logistics systems for all conditions. You can't break, record your, your logistics systems and break it over and over again. You want to synthetically generate breakages, right? Or you know, if you're training it to not hit a person in, with a car, you don't want to have people running in front of cars to do that. But you need to do it hundreds of millions of times. You, so, so you generate those things synthetic, right? Uh, and those come together, and then all of that allows you to then build a software-defined everything. Right, and then you could build a digital twin of everything. And now we're getting to the compute, and you see this is Omniverse, where we've got, for the first time in history, full fidelity in a digital twin. So Omniverse, if you don't know much about it, it does full 100% ray tracing, something that no other rendering engine does. And it does that to give you full fidelity, and that's why you need the L40S's to support oh, that. Okay. And they're, they're also doing, for the first time, full physics. Now, in our gaming technology that we do, we cheat a lot, if you like, not cheat at the game, but we, yeah. we, we cheat, <laughs> we don't render things we don't see, uh, we, don't, we do a lot of rastering in addition to ray tracing, we do uh, make-believe physics in a lot of cases, but when you're doing autonomous driving, 
mean, you can't make any of that up. It's right. got to be real. And so you got to have your you got to have your collected data and your real and and, and the synthetic data in the uh, in the simulation. And then uh, once you have all that, you can apply machine learning. And these new uh, uh, you know LLMs are going to be able to do things like generate a lot of that synthetic data. They're not quite there yet. And like in one area, we really need them to generate 3D data. And I must see a new paper every week getting closer and closer to that. 2D data, wow. 2D images, got it down. You saw it in, in Titan, you yeah. saw it in Stable Diffusion, you see it in others, right? But the 3D data, we just have started showing the beginnings of 3D. But you'll need that because the world is 3D and if you want to simulate the world in full fidelity, you do that. Uh, and then after you've done that, you push to production whether that production's in the cloud or in your car or whatever, and that creates more data and it all starts over again. That's and it just flywheel. gets better and better <laughs> and you optimize your enterprise better and better, you optimize everything better and better. So everything we've been doing the last 10 years or so has been building up all of the parts. And I wish we could have done it like, you know, right out of the gate, but the technology wasn't due there. Elastic fabric adapter wasn't there to be fast enough interconnects for memory sharing at the time, or the, you know, the uh, we, we didn't have Graviton, we didn't have Tranium, we didn't have the level of GPUs we have today. So all of that is coming together. That's what my, by the way, if you, people want to go watch my you know, emerging technology innovation talk, that's what it was all awesome. about. I will Thank link, we'll left, definitely link to that. Yeah. Let's get back to that flywheel, because that brings up a great conversation around, um, the future operating environment yeah. of, of the thing that we've been kind of riffing and trying to bring metaphors in, like we, we interviewed Andy Fetchenstein in 2018, yeah. the Rembrandt of motherboards, yes. as Pat Gelsinger would yeah, say. Yeah, he, he really know. was, I don't know, <laughs> I worked with him as Sun, and he, he even like, I don't know if you ever saw the, the, the heat sink on the Sun chip, the, uh, the uh, he, he he built into the fins the Sun logo. It was, it was gorgeous. He's a, he's, yeah, a, yeah. he's a genius. And by the way, yeah. great fan of the Cube as well. But yeah. So we, we were riffing and he said the constraint was the board, the yeah. size of the board. That was the real estate. Boards get bigger. Uh, cloud's different. The constraints are power if you're trying to put GPUs on the cloud. What are some of the constraints you got to work with? Because you're talking about a system now. Yeah. You're talking about data, a lot of data moving, synthetic data, real data, harmonizing data, bringing it through. What's the pipelines look like? They auto build, is it dynamic? Is there policy? Yeah, All yeah. this is like complicated. It sounds like a you got to lay it all out with components and interconnect, oh, it, and, and, it, it, and you need software to run it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that's why. I mean, from our foundation, we've been a software-defined infrastructure in a lot of ways, right? So software-defined compute, software-defined storage, software-defined networking, right? And that gives you the flexibility, right? And that that concept of software-defined infrastructure has is, is just moving into the enterprise and everywhere else and cars and everything else. So, the, so that's an important piece. Um, so that's one part, is, is, is the assumption that all the hardware is failing all the time and the software is routing around the failures. Uh, the second thing is that I'm very involved in is our transition to renewable energy. So we are by far uh, the largest purchaser of renewable energy. We're about 8x larger than the next person in line in purchasing renewable energy. Uh, and that's not just for our data centers, that is for our fulfillment centers, our logistics, for everything else you see us, you know, uh, coming with the Rivian vans that are electric and uh, a bunch of other suppliers are bringing in vans that are electric and hydrogen power and moving green hydrogen to our fulfillment centers and our data centers uh, and doing large capital investments in wind farms and solar. So by 2025, all, we'll be 100% renewable energy for our operations, and by 2040, we'll be net zero. And that's Amazon and AWS combined, Together, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's so a big goal. It, it is, that's a huge for, goal. for a company like us, it's, it's just massive, but you know, if we can do it, anybody <laughs> can do it. Nobody can say they're too big to do it. Well, we just saw an Adrian Cockroft about that. You got to build the muscles to get, get going, you got to volunteer and take some things, but back to, back to the constraints. If you look yeah. at the cloud, now I'm thinking architecturally, the new system to support all this data, the gen of AI, and the new innovations, is it, what's the constraints that you're working with? Get that flywheel going to build a enterprise and have a full digital well, business. Well, I think a lot of it for us is just, you know, how fast can we build out the infrastructure, right? I mean, we build a tremendous amount of infrastructure every day. Right, and so how can we build out the infrastructure? That's one piece. How can we get enough energy? That's another piece, right? Uh, and then, of course, our supply chains. And our supply chains are pretty robust. So we have a pretty good supply chain for everything, especially since we started building our own silicon seven years ago. You realize it's been seven years? <laughs> yeah, yeah we do. Building our own silicon. We've been tracking we, that early. Yeah, I know. It's been, it's been <laughs> I was at a replay party <laughs> with yeah, Andy, yeah. and someone goes to me, hey, you're the cube guy, look at this. He holds his hand out. It was the first apprenticeship. chip. Like, right, right. I said, can I take it? No, don't take a picture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see Andy's tweet? He's yeah, like, hello. Yeah. People that we were skeptical about what we're doing. Uh, yeah, not us. I mean, I mean <laughs> all, all our internal services are, <laughs> yeah. have, 
I moved to Graviton, huge savings in power, yeah. huge savings in, in, in cost, and massive increases in performance. You know, Trainium is going to change the game in, in, in language model training and inference and execution. So I, I think those are just, just really exciting it, things. Th there's no compression algorithm for experience. Somebody yeah. once said that. Does yeah. that apply yeah. for ARM-based chips as well? Yeah, is that because sure, we're seeing sure. a, lot of, yeah. a lot of companies announcing that stuff? Is that there, as? Yeah, it definitely does because you've got to have the compilers, you've got to have the drivers, you've got to have you know, all the different components there for ARM, and it takes time to build all that up. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Right. That's I mean, why I'll, NVIDIA's got an advantage yeah, right now. Yeah, right? it, it does the, as the well. They've, they've, made they've, been in ARM, yeah. they've also been in ARM for a very long time also. Oh yeah, indeed. Oh, right, so, so you know, they've got their, their, their Grace Hopper chip, which is an amazing chip yeah. as well. Uh, and you know, Jensen's done a fantastic job focusing on accelerated computing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, their, their GPUs are you know, very impressive. I mean, they're, they're, they're an impressive, impressive. I mean, he said, 32, he said 32 Grace Hoppers are connected as one unit yeah. uh, with Nitro making yeah. one giant virtual instance. I think they're using MVLink one terabyte yeah. per second. This is now what you were saying earlier, the interconnects. They're becoming, I won't say cluster, but the units, but they're, they're systems. They're like, yeah. these, not just, chips, yeah. it's what's around it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all together, right? I mean, you got to have the network, you got to have the, the interconnects, you have to have the computer, you have to have the storage, all, all those things. So it, it, it's, a, uh, it's really fantastic <laughs> to see. I mean, and again, it's getting to that point yeah. where you can start doing full fidelity digital twins, which is an amazing thing to say, right? And, oh, and yeah. so this idea of where, where you know, these, these large language models are going to really accelerate everything in the, in the two and 3D space, along, along with the textual space as well, right? And they're going to just be so common, they're going to be like spell check on your laptop. You know, you're just going to be, they're going to be part of everything you do every day. Right, and, and, and where's and, the impact going to be out of the gate? Where's the initial, take me through the impact of the digital so, twin so, full so, fidelity. So, so that, now Swami might, might disagree with me. <laughs> so, so my feeling on a lot of this digital twin space uh, and a lot of this um, uh, generative AI space, that the biggest impacts first are going to be in anything that's visual. So designing cars, buildings, bridges, uh, movies, um, games, those things. And the reason being, John, you know, if uh, if you say make me a dragon flying over a castle, you know immediately whether that's what you want or not. <laughs> if you say read the 60 page legal document and tell me if I should sign the contract, yeah. do you have to yeah. check that? Right, you know, like yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think you, know, so you need so a I compiler think, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I think this, this interaction between engineers again, if you if you watch my uh, uh, my innovation link, one of the things we did this is very excited about this. So basically, I, I went to Stable Studio and said, design me a luxury sedan, and it did, right? That's all, that's all I said was a luxury sedan, Ford or a luxury sedan. I said, okay, now show, it, show me that 360 degrees around in both directions, and it, it, it imaged that. Uh, and then my team took that and we ran it through a neural radiance field, which converts it to 3D. Okay, uh, and and you can't yet do this well. This is again, this is like for future what we're working on. Okay. Then we converted that to a 3D point cloud. It's a little grainy still, but it's getting better. In the last week, it got even better, right? Yeah. It's like this is changing all, all the time. And then we we had the machine go through and estimate the uh, the drag coefficient on that shape without me doing a high performance yeah. computing run, wow. which it did instantaneously. Yeah. And then I told it to change the design of the car to reduce my drag coefficient, and it did. Right, so you can imagine. In the old, day, in the old days, yeah, in the old days of HPC, that would be like eight hundred thousand core hours. Yes, and, basically. And, 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 and the, the, cost, and, and the yeah. cost of doing that yeah. would have been it's, astronomical. Yeah. yeah. Now, now the the caveats in this is that it's the the HPC versus the the uh, ML for estimating the co the drag coefficient is about ninety eight to ninety nine percent accurate. So don't fly a plane designed by yeah, a large yeah, language exactly, model yeah. without <laughs> doing the HPC first. Right. But in, in when you talk about these design cycles that you can go through. Now, where as you know, let's show okay, do the structural engineering on that. They, the, the, the ML is going to do that and say it looks good to me, and, and, and okay, change this, change this, okay, that's the way I want it. And then you go home at night, the HPC runs overnight and says, yes, that's correct, or no, it wasn't. If it says no, it wasn't, you feed that back into the model, and the next time the model gets that right, right? So this just is a. So what would Swami not agree with that? I think it's a Swami. Well, 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 well so Swami, 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 Swami's really, they're, they're focused a lot more on chatbots yeah. and, and on the textual 
technical side of things. It's and just I focus in, yeah. a, no, you're a, a lot ahead more of the on, the, on the visual yeah. side yeah, of you, things. You roll right yeah, yeah, into yeah, his yeah, narrative. Yeah, He's yeah, in yeah. the present tense. You're in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. I mean, you know, we're working with his team. His team's done some amazing things in this space because like everything I talked yeah. about was done with his team. So it isn't like, yeah, yeah, like, right. like our, our team has worked. worked I mean, just I mean, just the things that you're saying, and just to kind of zoom out as we wrap up, is the advancements in in performance yeah. for things like even six months ago, stable um, um, stability AI, yeah, yeah. image rendering, wasn't really that possible. Yeah, like yeah. with artists, wasn't, yeah, and then yeah. now you talk about 3D. Scope the order of magnitude of how much has changed just in six months. It, it's just crazy, and that's you know that's another thing I talk about in my presentation. When I, I was was you know in the early days of the internet getting popular, which I know you guys were too. Remember how excited we were when we would see a TV ad that had a URL. In it? Yeah. Remember that? I mean, like, like yeah. that would be stupid yeah. now. Oh, it's wow. an, it an image. It's a, it's a URL, right? Like, anyway, so, so now um, you know the 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 and that we thought that was going fast, but it's going five times faster than that. So literally. Really like, and I can show you on my, on my phone from a from the uh, 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 from three weeks ago when I did pull my presentation together to today, the the resolution of the 3D model that I talked about we made yeah. is has gone up by about 10x. Yeah. Wow, right. order of magnitude in, in three weeks? In three weeks, right, just the teams <laughs> yeah. working on it. I mean, the, the things you're seeing is just, it's just. It's, so it's we're going to see a lot between now and next year. Yeah, I think, I think this area is going to going to really transform. Uh, and you're at Dwawi, hey, got you here. I know you got to go. We're super happy to have you on, on theCUBE for yeah. your busy schedule. Entrepreneurs out there who are building want to start a company. A lot of young generation uh, engineers coming in yeah. and saying, hey, I'm going to jump on this wave of whatever we're calling it, generative AI, but the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the overall innovation and an inflection point we're seeing performance. Yeah. What areas would you recommend entrepreneurs to solve problems in? Uh, yeah. that, are, that, are not, that are good white spaces and or territory to take, what would you recommend? Yeah, so, so I think the, the what I mentioned to you when we were when we, we met earlier, uh, uh, right before reInvent, is the synthetic data generation that can be fed back into these models, right? I think that's an area that needs a lot of evolution, and is going to really, really, really change the game because you need, you know, you need billions of of, uh, of defects to train a model, and in the real world, you don't have billions of defects. You need to drive. Uh, uh, 15 million miles an hour of synthetic driving in the cloud. So you've got to generate 15 million miles of, of 3D, of a virtual world to have a car learn to do that. You have to do billions of grasp plans on a robot with, with components. And so generating those is a big deal. And training and guiding the generation of that is a big deal. I think the other areas that uh, need to be focused on is what we call explainability. Like, why did the model do that? And then attribution is another huge thing in this intellectual property world. So, you know, if, if, if I said draw a dragon and it took the dragon from your art and then I go sell it, you're not going to be happy about that. So what we would love to be able to do is say, hey, draw a dragon and then send John money when I Digital sell it. John gets some of that. DRM. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Digital, remember um, the web thing? You know, you know there's so. other things that we've run into. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. It's called catastrophic forgetfulness. <laughs> right, that, that is when you train a model, you overtrain a model in a specific domain where it starts to override its ability to be more of a, a human or a chatbot kind of kind of interaction because it, it, it's almost like a professor that, that you can't talk to because you know, they're, so, they're so heady in their subject, right? <laughs> sounds, uh, sorry, sounds like our language. Yeah, model, yeah, 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 <laughs> it's only, only speaks yeah, cube. Yeah, 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 and then, you know, hallucinations and dealing yeah. with those. So I think uh, models around all those and models that chat, models and synthetic data generation, those are the gaps that where everybody's got to fill out. I think the, the, and then last, but definitely not least, is taking these models that are 200 billion parameters and making them do the same thing with like 10 billion parameters uh -huh. so we can fit them on a much smaller computer. Yeah. Awesome. Right, I think that those would be big areas, and that's a huge mathematical problem, right? I, I think, you know, usually, it's, I mean, this is really, yeah. in the end, this is just math, remember that. Yeah, math, so, and, math and science and yeah. physics all part of the curriculum. Math and data, <laughs> compute, yeah, and compute. That's, that, that, that's what well, we Well, the Cube's got the flywheel going on here, that's we got tons great. of content that's going great. on, we got a master class, and yeah, kind of a look great. at the future. Great to have you on, VP yeah. of Engineering at the Emerging yeah. Tech. Uh, always good to see that, and again, the progress has been great. Congratulations on all your success. Right, well, we didn't it's, talk about quantum at all, you know? <laughs> But I mean, that's another thing we can spend a lot of time on. But. We will definitely get you back on the studio. Okay. Come, come in remote to the studio next this month. We'll get okay, you on remote. Right. Sounds we'll good. We'll get you on quantum. Another topic we want to unpack.
back. Oh, great. Bill, all thank right. you for your time. All Appreciate right, it. All right, all right. Keep the coverage continues. Back to Palo Alto. We'll be back right after this short break.